Hey, in this video we're going to look at how to detect insufficient material stalemates in chess variants. And I did this for my game Chesscraft, and I thought it was a really interesting problem and deserved a video. Uh, because this problem is easy for classic chess, but it's much, much harder for millions of chess variants. So in classic chess, I mean, I really just started with Google and found this page, describes a few situations, and they look like this, you know, right here. This is a stalemate, you can't possibly win. Well, this is a stalemate as well, one knight. This is a stalemate too. It's only because the bishops are on the same color though. You can never get checkmate. However, if the bishops are on different colors and black decides to help a little bit, we can actually still get a checkmate. So I got this review a while ago on my game. Um, I believe the app doesn't recognize that it's drawn when king and bishop versus king. And I figured it was time to do this, even though it's quite a challenge, actually. So why is this a hard problem to solve in Chesscraft? Well, if you have a case like this, you might think, you know, one bishop, you couldn't possibly win. Well, what if there's two kings on the board? You can get a checkmate. Because now no king can move out of the way. It's a weird checkmate. Or you might see again, there's one bishop, and you couldn't possibly checkmate. Well, maybe on this map, if you land your bishop here, it turns into a queen or a wizard. But the biggest challenge here is actually with the editor. So if I make a new piece, I can make something that's almost like a bishop. Maybe it can only go range 3 and range 2 backwards. Well, this is clearly less than a bishop, and it can't checkmate the king. But if you had just one more, like a one, one move for a rook or one jump like a knight, you could team up with a king to checkmate. So in one case, we have a subset of a bishop, and here we have something that goes beyond what a bishop can do. The same thing could happen with the king. You might have a king normally do this. Well, if your king can now move forward like a rook, then all of those other cases really still apply. You know, the king can escape. Well, what if it's less than a king? If it can move like this, then actually one or two bishops can be enough to checkmate it. So I have a test suite for Chesscraft, and this runs automated tests on all the logic and the way the game works, and that's definitely how I tackled this. I have another video on the test suite of Chesscraft, if you're interested, but just a quick summary. The idea is that you write your tests, and then you run your test suite, and they fail because you haven't made the actual code work yet and then you make the code work, you implement it, then you run your test suite again and things pass. So now that everything's passed, I'm pretty confident the game is okay. And the tests I wrote, here's the test stalemate. So I'll make a board that just has two kings and I'm saying that's a stalemate. Well, if we each have a bishop, that's a stalemate. If one of us does or the one has a knight, so these are those classic cases. But if we move on to classic pieces on uh, an unusual board, so we have kings, but we might have more than one king for a player. So is that a stalemate? Or just generally things that are impossible on classic chess, but using classic pieces. And right here is that uh, bishop king skewer, which is what we saw here. So if you've got two kings and a bishop, you can win that. Next up, and these were the tricky ones, is testing weird variant pieces for insufficient material stalemates. And the way I named these test pieces are king minus, that's like a king minus a few moves. King plus, that's like a king with a few extra moves. In this case, it's a king that acts like a queen. Bishop minus is like a bishop, but a little less. Same for the knight. And I just came up with as many cases as I can. This is a 5x3 board with just a king and a bishop and a king minus for white. And that's actually not a stalemate, and I'll show you why. Now say this black king can only move diagonally. So that's the minus king. Well, if the king is silly and goes into a corner, we can checkmate that king. And there's here the king that acts like a queen. That's not a stalemate, but for the opposite reason, because the other player can win. And we have those similar cases with bishops on the same color or different colors, except just verify it also works for the 
bishop minus the reduced bishop and bishop minus and the bishop skewer and these are just regular other stalemates and there's lastly the promotion so you could have a bishop but in this case it can promote to a queen on a certain tile so that's not a stalemate now when i wrote these tests i had is insufficient material stalemate and is stalemate and they just said no they always said uh, the same answer i hadn't implemented it and all my tests failed and that's when i realized i needed to tackle something called uh, subset and superset pieces so i already introduced this idea a couple minutes ago but just to review because it's pretty wacky this piece is a subset of a bishop because everything it can do a bishop can do and more or there may be equal you know if it was exactly a bishop then that's a subset as well that's how i define that um, but the moment you do anything extra this piece is not a subset of a bishop i've also done the opposite with supersets so uh, a queen might move like this and this is a superset of any smaller pieces so a queen is a superset piece of a rook. Everything a rook can do, a queen can do. And a queen is also a superset of a king and of a bishop. And that's when I realized I needed even more tests. So I did that. And here's test subset bishop. I'm making a, a piece that starts at zero and I'm slowly adding functionality to it and verifying the subset situation. Did the same for a knight, so I slowly turned on knight jumps and checked each time whether it's still a knight. And I did something similar with the classic pieces, like the knight is a subset, is not a subset of a queen. Uh, pawn is not a subset of a queen, because actually the pawn can en passant. There's also test subset ignore flags, because pieces can move differently than how they attack. For example, you can have a unicorn now this will move like a queen, but it will attack like a knight. And this enhances my detection for subsets because if I'm doing a king subset, I don't care if one can attack everywhere and the other can't. What really matters for a king is if it can move out of checkmate. Similarly, it doesn't really matter how a bishop moves. It matters how the bishop attacks. So I wanna check if something is a subset of a bishop, but just for attacking. Finally, there's something I had to define called a safe attack. So let's say uh, this white king can move like a queen or a knight. So it's some kind of super king, I don't know. And so if this black king is a regular king, and this is that super king, well, you can put this king in checkmate. So this is going to be checkmate. Even though both of these pieces can be checkable, if black had a rook, white would be in check right now. And this is only possible because these two checkable pieces, this one can safely attack this other one. And the way I tested the safety attacking is with this safety matrix, where I've described for every classic piece, if it can attack another classic piece without it getting hit back. So for example, a bishop can attack a rook without the rook hitting back. Now this doesn't mean for every case, it just means for some cases. For example, the queen right here can attack the bishop without getting hit back. But of course there are cases where the queen and bishop are both hitting each other. So I'm just gonna go through that matrix and assert that all the results are what we'd expect. And I use this here right when I start the game just to check if there is such a thing as safe checking, yes or no. And this is especially important with one of my favorite pieces. You see this tree here. This is a king that can be put in check, but it can't move in any way. So the moment something attacks it, it's done. If we had a regular king, the king could just walk right up to the tree and checkmate the tree. So that regular king can safely check the stationary tree. There's of course one more problem. If you're making your own board, that's nice and all, but you can also remove tiles and add them. And you can really go crazy with that. So this is a little bit beyond what I could possibly do. Uh, here you gotta throw out everything you know about bishops and knights uh, giving checkmate or not. 
So one last thing that I check for is calculating the board shape. This is pretty simple. It just finds out if it's rectangular or if it's weird. If it's weird, I just don't do anything that I've just talked about in this video. Uh, but if it's rectangular, then I can go ahead with that. And this is just a pretty simple scan on coordinates. Find the bottom left, find the bottom, the top right, and see if it's a square. And here are my tests for that. I've got uh, these strings describe boards. In Chesscraft, it parses these and makes a board out of it. So this is a 5x3, this is a 16x16, 16 16. this is a... And these are irregular. So here, this is a little fatter in the middle. This has a, a donut, it's like a gap in the middle. Then I'm just gonna check that it's yes or no for that shape. So as I wrote all of this, it was starting to get a little confusing with all the weird cases. Uh, I added a couple tests as I came up with them, and I also wrote wrote down my basic rules here before my main logic happened. Now the critical element here is that there's no false positives. You do not want to be playing a game of chess against my AI. You think you're about to win because you've got one piece left and you can totally win, and then my game says, burp, that's a draw. <laughs> that, that would suck, especially if I was wrong about that. So. We really don't want to have false positives, but this is the system to do that with the tests. And after I wrote this out, I had a much easier time writing the actual code, which finally is what you see here. So first off, I will just exit if we have more than four pieces on either side. This is just a big optimization speed up because I always do a benchmark to make sure this code I just wrote didn't wreck my AI by making it slow. And this is just a uh, pretty simple way to do that. You know, if you have five bishops on white tiles versus one king, you know, I, I forgive my engine for not, not realizing that. And the player might not even expect it, a draw, an immediate draw, they'll eventually offer one. If there is safe checking, so if there are kings that can attack kings, or checkable pieces, then, you know, just say no. Insufficient material will never happen because kings don't die. After that, if, so now we know that there is not any safe checking, we can say if the number of checkable pieces equals the number of pieces, that's that king versus king endgame, a classic king, classic king, or any subset of that. But if we have, we have this case where if you have no checkable pieces, for example, in this level with just a bunch of black snakes and no black king, or if any player has no checkable pieces, you can just throw away your pieces and eventually lose them, so that's not a stalemate either. Now we're going to start counting those pieces on the board, and I put this off as long as I could with these other checks, because these are simple and fast. This is a little bit of a loop. So we're just going to go through every piece. If that is a fancy piece, then I'm just going to return false. So if it's sort of a superset of a knight or bishop or kind of a queen, like a strong piece, then I'm just going to say it's never an insufficient material draw. If there's a piece on the board that can be promoted, I'm going to say it's a draw because at least something can happen. If our piece is a knight, then we're going to add up our knight counter. And if, we, if anyone has more than one knight, then we're going to say the game's not over. Here is if we found a bishop. So if it's on white, we're counting up the bishops on white and the bishops on black. Note how I'm not saying white bishops on white, because that actually doesn't matter. And then for the other count, this doesn't matter about what tile they're on, just how many white or black there are. And if we have at least one bishop on black and white, then it's not a draw. We're going to count up our king supersets. And these are kings that move more than a king. So if we have more than one king and at least one black bishop, we could do that skewer, king skewer, and same thing for the other color. Finally, if all that go goes through and we're still wondering, that's actually true. That is an insufficient material draw. So as I was writing this, I was constantly running my test suite and waiting a few seconds, and finally, I saw this instead of a big page of red, and I was very happy. So the code you see in this video is free and open source uh, with an MIT license. The code links are in the video description. 
And if you have ideas for the next video, let me know in an email or a message. Finally, the full version of Chesscraft is free to play, so check it out. And thanks for watching.